Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford. The UK is having a bad month. Queen Elizabeth II died and the British pound is nosedive. We've seen the pound fall to its lowest level in 37 years. So what happened and why? Let's look at economics in real life. Right now, British investors don't want pounds and they're exchanging them for other currencies so the supply of pounds has increased. Foreigners don't want pounds either, so the demand has fallen. So more supply and less demand caused the price, the exchange rate, to fall. Ah. Okay, but why? Well, in a word. Economic gamble. Reckless gamble. Is your plan a gamble? The UK just got a new prime minister and treasury chancellor, and they're suggesting some sweeping changes. The government wants to cut taxes to boost economic growth. And the plan is to finance those tax cuts by borrowing money. But the issue is that Great Britain, like most countries, has a problem with inflation. Soaring inflation. People are seeing soaring bills on their energy, on their food. Textbook economics says that cutting taxes and increasing deficit spending is exactly the opposite of what should be done right now. This is because putting more money in people's hands would only make inflation worse. Borrowing your way out of inflation isn't a plan, it's a fairy tale. And this is why domestic and foreign investors ran for the hills to go buy other currencies. As the Chancellor delivered his statement with surprise extra tax cuts funded by borrowing, the pound fell even more. There is a broader debate about the effectiveness of this type of policy. What's called supply side economics or Reaganomics in the US or sometimes called something D-O-O -O economics, voodoo economics. It's a little controversial, but the idea is simple. If the government decreases business taxes, then those businesses have more money to expand and grow. This whole plan is orientated around growth. We will see higher wages, we'll see more jobs, and we'll see a higher tax yield that will pay for public services like education, police, and schools. At the heart of the argument is a legit question. Which leads to more long-term sustainable growth? More government spending or more private business spending? The new prime minister is convinced that it's the latter. To her, inflation isn't the problem. Growth is what matters, so it's better to give that money to businesses since the government will just likely waste it. I have a, a silly walk and I'd like to obtain a government grant to help me develop it. So these supply side policies could actually work, but in this case, the problem is timing. The Chancellor and Prime Minister resemble two desperate gamblers in a casino, chasing a losing run. What we're trying to do is to create incentives and also look at supply side reform. The objective of the plan isn't boosting demand, it's stimulating genuine economic growth. This is not about stimulating consumption. I also like to live dangerously. It's likely that cutting taxes now will lead to higher inflation. Maybe more growth in the long run, but in the short run, definitely higher prices and higher interest rates, which often lead to less growth. So really, this is not as much as a gamble as it is an experiment. Economic experiment. This is an experiment. But the silver lining to any experiment is that it helps future generations know what we should or shouldn't do. Yes, the textbook says that these policies will boost inflation, but the textbook could be wrong and only time will tell. Mr. Speaker, we're at the beginning of a new era. And as we contemplate, and as we contemplate, that's right, that's right, a new era. All that said, there are some clear winners here. If you're an American and you want to buy British products or travel to the UK, now's the time. Hey, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. If you're a teacher, take a look at the worksheet that goes along with this video. If you're a student, take a look at the ultimate review packet that has tons of practice to help you learn and love economics. Thanks for watching. Till next time.